this nice safe space for them to kind of have those struggles and those challenges and then to kind of work through a lot of that. We want you to practice going through that here with us. We can ask all the questions and get all the strategies from your therapist. So in the moments out in the community, when that happens also, you you guys are like, okay, well, I know that we can keep going through this and then calmly talking to them and I'm trying to help them soothe that eventually they'll be able to get to get through this um, calmly and smoothly. It's a learning process. We we don't want them, we don't want to prevent them from being out in the community places just because it's a struggle for them, because it's important that they learn and grow to be out in these places. Eventually they're going to be without you. Eventually <coughs> you will not be there on a field trip. You will not be there when they go out with their friends. You will not be in some of these environments with them. And so we want to give them all the skills. And unfortunately, as a parent, sometimes that means we have to kind of fight through all their learning curves through all of those skills. So the community is still a really important place, but you can kind of try and juggle and see kind of how it's going to go. Um, let me see. Oh, I went through most of this already. Um, oh, here they have two things, an escape plan and a recharging plan. <laughs> They're kind of the same. So. Part of planning ahead um, is knowing where the quiet spaces might be, if that's something that your child really needs. Like sometimes they just get so overstimulated, I just need them to kind of have a place to calm. It might be nice for you to have somewhere to take them if they've gotten really worked up, to try and calm them out without removing them fully and just going home. Also, that might be what they're wanting is to <laughs> escape. And we want to teach them that it's okay to be there, it's okay for these things to be hard, and we can work through them. Um, so if you feel, and if you're reading them, you're like, maybe we'll just try a, some calm down time. And the growth of store is hard, and sometimes that might mean kind of walking out of the store, being outside in the calm, and going back into the store. Um, you can even pull over <laughs> kind of out of the way and just like have a moment where you're talking with them, you're looking at them, they're in the cart, like, everything is fine, we're gonna go through the store, kind of go through the plan with them, um, things like that. So kind of some way that you can kind of work through and be calm and give them the space to come out of what they've worked themselves up into. Uh, Cause they, a lot of times it's just that they don't know. They're overwhelmed, they don't know how to read all the information from the environment. They might want something that you're saying they can't have, um, which can be the most difficult. And I, it's important to kind of be like, no, we can't have that, but we can do this, maybe redirecting them. And your therapist is a great person to talk about that stuff with, because that's what they're working on in class too, is kind of redirecting, transitioning through. It, it's very much in a preschool play sort of situation, but all of those strategies and ideas can be applied into other parts of your day. Um, so please like use your therapist for those ideas and kind of how to plan ahead and just know you know your child and so allow yourself to pay attention and be open to some of those things that you might not have before and ask a lot of whys. Why are they melting down right now? Why is this really hard for them? What happened right before this? Was it this, this, and this? It, has this happened before with any of these other factors? So there's going to be a lot of questions and a lot of kind of, you have to play detective a little bit. You guys are your, own, your child's detective on why they do what they do. Especially because a lot of your children are still working on communicating those feelings to you. So you kind of have to guess and kind of pay attention to what's happening around them and give them the, the language and the kind of the calm and the reason so that eventually they'll be able to bring it to themselves, if that makes sense. Um, let me see, any questions or anything? Okay, let's see. I think I went through most of this. Um, I posted I, I posted this for uh, the therapist, um, but I can find it and kind of remind them to give it to you or they can pull it up for you. I found on the Red Tricycle website, I don't know if any of you guys have, um, use that. I mean, I just Googled 
uh, and it came up, but that's a really great website for kids activities. And they have so many activities <laughs> for kids with, with special needs. With a, some of them are for kids with more extreme special needs, but they provide a lot of the, the calm and the kind of these special environments that are easier for a lot of children, even if they don't have an extreme physical um, disability or anything like that, but they're all over the Bay Area. They have special times to go to some of these play areas where it's calmer. They take a lot of the, the extreme sensory information out. So do your research. That's part of planning. Do some research. Find the times that these indoor play areas might have. Um, find even events or parks. If your child's having a really hard time at some of these places, they don't need to necessarily have a special need. It just might be a better environment, a little calmer for them to practice being at these places. And it's easier. So it's just being monitored, I think, is the best thing. These, these, those times that these play areas and these, these parks are built to kind of take out some of the stress um, that might be at other locations and other play areas. So you don't have to, and no one's gonna ask you, no one's gonna say, oh, do you meet this, this, and this requirement? But if your child's having a really hard time going to some of these um, community events and kind of going to some of these places, these ideas might be great places to practice and ease back in for yourself and for your child, because some of those factors that your child might be struggling with <coughs> will kind of be eased out of some of in these situations. So that way, they can go to the park on a regular day, or they could go to a player on a regular day. Also, as a parent, I know that sometimes it's more about what everybody else around you is thinking. If your child's having a meltdown and you can just feel everybody looking at you. Um, my biggest pet peeve myself in the grocery store is when my child's on the floor having a meltdown. And a, I mean, more power to the, the grandmas, but Sometimes they come over and go, oh my gosh, are you okay? And I wanna be like, no, don't pay attention to her. <laughs> like you're feeding into it, but they don't know, they wanna help. And so sometimes it's just everybody else wanting to give their opinion, or they might not even be looking at you, but you feel like they are. And so you're like, oh, I know that they think I'm a terrible mom right now. Oh my gosh, they're looking at how I'm handling this. Everyone's annoyed. But one, who cares? <laughs> they can be annoyed. They're not the one that has to be there with your child. They're not the one that has to walk through this. So they can walk out of the grocery store and go home. You have to be here and you have to get this errand done and you have to teach your child a skill at the same time. So really, no matter what they're thinking, you're the superhero because you're doing 10 things. You're getting errands done and you're guiding your child through all of these skills at the same time. But that can be really stressful for you. And then when you get stressed, your child gets stressed. So some of these events that you might look up will take some of that stress away because those parents are all going through the same thing. So no matter what, you might see another child with a meltdown and they're kind of walking through the same thing. So it kind of gives you the safe space and just another idea of where to go. If you're like, I just can't handle going to those places yet, look, do some research, find some ideas, find some times, find some activities that are built for these children that are having a little harder time out in the community. Um, there's lots. The Bay Area is big, and there's so much going on all the time. Um, so kind of do, do a little bit of research. And if you have any questions and you're not sure where to start, ask your therapist. Um, I'm, we're constantly kind of sharing ideas amongst ourselves here at Speech Goals, and also your other therapist, if you have other, your child's getting other services, they'll have resources also. Um, if you have a meeting with your social worker, please tell your social worker, that's super important. Um, and they might have some ideas. Oh, have you tried going here? Oh, they, we're all kind of trying to remain aware. So we might have some ideas or places to look um, that we just hadn't thought of sharing. Or another family has told us somewhere, we're like, oh, we have another family that went to this event. Have you thought of that? Um, so kind of, be open to the conversation and ask around and do your research. And there's so many options to kind of alleviate some of that where you don't have to kind of struggle 
so much as you're kind of getting used to teaching your child the strategies and all of that. Um, let's see. First of the day. Any questions or anything so far? Any? Do any of you have any places that you go or anywhere that you find either super hard or have been to some of these events? Um, these kind of special times that you use for your own family and your own children. Any that you guys have? <laughs> yeah, I had. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, last uh, last two weeks ago, we go to the children, um, Brownwood National Park at party. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There is a lit, uh, little train. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's still very happy there. Yeah, the, the variety is a three dollar per person. That kids or any adult oh. that can can ride it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. only uh right, uh, Saturday Sunday only. Yeah. Oh, in Berkeley. Yeah, in the children's. Yeah, oh, children. I've heard of that place. Yeah, it's it's cool. Yeah. The children like it. It's uh, like a cheap train. Mm -hmm. The train. The, the train. children always love the train. Yeah. It's like train. The Berkeley and Berkeley's a great place. And on and it's far, and you have to drive over the bridge. But I know both Oakland and Berkeley have a lot of kids. Um, museums and play areas and they're kind of in a bigger space in san francisco a lot of things and the peninsula a lot of things are small and kind of can feel more crowded but going to east bay if you can there's lots of stuff over there the area is full of things even getting outside in fresh air so if there's a trail um there's so many kid friendly trails that you don't have to hike uphill it's just a place where they can kind of run and if they want to scream at the top of their lungs they're outside so it's okay and kind of get some of that energy out which is another great tool before going on some of the errands is it because they need to go run outside and play it, it's a trial and error and so i would i think for since he's trying to escape mm -hmm. the situation, you already recognize that. Yeah. I would use breaks, but you're not leaving. So if you have the time to take lots of small breaks, be like, okay, we're gonna go sit over here, but then we're gonna come back. And that way he's kind of learning, oh, mom, like I can't just leave. Like mom has decided that we're here and no matter how much I like hurt myself or anything, this is where we're gonna be and kind of to work through that. So he knows that that's okay to be in the space, but you could take breaks. Mm -hmm. So I think the the recharging um, plan <clears throat> for him would be really would be really helpful, or at least to try it. Another thing for you yeah. to try um, to see if it'll work. And there will be it might take time, and there will be days where it's hard. But if it's somewhere you really need to be, um, I think it's try kind of taking little breaks. Maybe it's see if it's the time, like you said at the beginning. He does really well, and then it kind of starts to, after a little bit of time, he starts to get a little irritated. So maybe knowing when that time is, and naturally working in the breaks when you know he's going to start kind of getting irritated and not losing that that steam. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then he's screaming to her right away, like, help me, help oh, me. No. So it makes it horrible because everybody who's yeah. like, like, this poor child, what are they doing to him? Yeah, like, yeah. So I don't know where he learned that, but he learned it, and it's very embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then they do all, at some point, I feel like every child tries the help me help towards me. their yeah. mom, and then you're like, oh, gosh. Um, yeah, like, what, and then the, some people do go like, are you okay? Is he okay? Like, yeah, yeah, he's fine. Mm -hmm. He just wants attention right now. Mm -hmm. and that's good. And sometimes you will have to say, like, like back off yeah, in back a nice off. way. So like, <laughs> yeah. Please back off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that maybe adding some talk and some language around that. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> you're okay. Mommy is here. I am helping you. I'm helping you calm down. So that way, one, you know that everyone's kind of hearing you, yeah. and that help, kind of helps you stay calm. And it's almost self-talk for yourself. You're yeah, almost kind of exactly. also talking to yourself. Like, every, you are fine. Let's go take a break. We will come back. We'll take two minutes, and then we'll come back. So kind of that talk through um, is another, another kind of strategy. It kind of does both. One, he's hearing it and knowing, oh, if I go help me, it's not helping. 
Um, mom isn't calling for it and I can't use it anymore. And then also it helps you kind of one, talk yourself down a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then everyone can hear, oh, he, I mean, I don't know if they'll all clue in, but some people might be like, oh, she's trying, like, oh, he's just God. kind of doing it. Like, I am helping you. I'm going to okay. add in that language for him. So he knows that you're not, you're not diving into where he's trying to get you to go. It, I mean, it's a strategy, but I can also uh, touch base with, our director too, and I can kind of touch base with some of our therapists here if there's any other strategies okay, they might have for that. Yeah, yeah. If you want to write it down um, before you leave with your name and your email, then I can follow up if we have anything else that we can kind of. Okay, I also have Jasmine's number. So oh, perfect. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in yeah, I would. Have, she might. She might know yeah. too. Some extra resources. She's yeah, yeah, she's pretty good. Um, so I would definitely use maybe the breaks for mm -hmm. him. Oh, uh, another thing I wanted to share with everybody that has been kind of working for me sometimes. Uh, I've been using essential oils, and I did not believe in that. <laughs> but it's been like even for bedtime because he used to sleep two or three hours per night. It was mm -hmm. horrible, and it's been really helping me. And when we go out, um, I just roll on a little scent, and he he's like a little more calm. Mm -hmm. um, lately, I barely started. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's been working for me. It might help somebody. Yeah, that's great. Even the smell. I mean, those smells. Yeah. They be like candles, essential oils, anything like that that you notice. And that's kind of what I'm talking about is paying attention to the tiny things that even help a little bit kind of get you through those those moments and the transitions and kind of work through it a little bit. Oh, before I might want to, do you want to, you know, that the kids are being hungry? <laughs> you know, because they're being really good. So I wanted to interview you. Know, so, yeah, you know, First so, time I love my daughter by herself. Yeah, no, so oh, she wanted to make sure that I met you all because they're really good. So, and that's you. what's great about this moment, too, is um, for anyone who might be in the Learning Together class, that parent separation is kind of built into the class, but the speech group, it's not. And so we want to work on that. We want you guys to be in the class and learning everything, mm -hmm. but these are really great because you get to kind of practice that parent separation part, and it's hard. Um, but you're here in the building, so yes, you're you got yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I double park behind the white Honda, just in case. Okay, I'll, I'll, I, I'm pretty sure I left my number, but I don't okay. remember. Uh, the white Honda might be in the therapist, so you'll be okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm um, already like, um, oh wow. And so I, I do have questions for Christina. I don't know if you want them now, or do we wait for everybody? Questions no, um, so we can take questions from the other offices. If you guys have any questions you want to answer, you can write them down or you can kind of add, we'll kind of start the question and answer bit. Um, yeah, let's begin. I don't know. <coughs> okay. Oh, eating in restaurants. Yes, yes. How can a two year old play by himself or should do one mom work from dinner? This is a great question. I forgot about the restaurants. Um, restaurants can be really tricky. And uh, I do have to say that there was a period of time where with my daughter, she walk into the door of the restaurant, she'd start screaming, and then you walk out of the door and she's giggling. So <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has experienced that, yeah. but yes. And so restaurants can be very hard. They're, they're overstimulating. And they're also dark. Um, that's the biggest thing I notice is that they dim the lights in restaurants a lot. And for little kids, that that could be it. They're like, oh, it's dark and scary. Um, it could also be the noise. It could be crowded. Um, they could also know that they're about to be made to sit quietly. There could be food at the restaurant that they do not want or the smell. There's so many things <clears throat> happening in a restaurant that they can't tell us what's the matter and might kind of get them, get them going. Um, at the time, uh, I was not working here at Speed Goals, so I did not have access to all of the strategies and the know-how. Um, and it was, but I did know and that I didn't want her to do that forever. So her dad and I would take turns and we would go and sit down because we got her like a few minutes where we could order our food and then we would just take turns and one person would eat and as if she needed to leave, we go out and calm her down, but always bring her back. And then the next person got the turn. Was not that fun for us, but it's teaching them that they're gonna need to be in this space. You don't get to go home. 
you will always come back in. You also don't get to scream in the, in the restaurant. You don't get to throw things. You don't get, this is not, those behaviors are not an option. And if they need a break, because once they're worked up in the restaurant, that's where all the triggers are. So removing them either to the bathroom for kind of a calm down or outside for a calm down. And then when they're calm, bringing them back so that they kind of learn, we will always come back. Um, another is activities. Lots of restaurants hopefully have coloring pages. If they don't, bring your own. Kind of bring your own coloring book. If you know that that will keep them occupied for a little bit, um, definitely kind of bring it. Have it in the car. I used to keep crayons and um, kind of paper in the car. Um, going to the Dollar Tree, they always have a bunch of journals. And you can just, as you kind of, if you go to the Dollar Tree or any store and they have a deal, kind of keep those on hand, pull them out with some crayons. I don't know if um, you guys have all those, like, zip. I always have like a million zippy pouches for makeup or anything. And I keep crayons in those and I keep them in my car because they're really great for kids to kind of draw and they may even crumple the paper. They could do all sorts of things. They can rip the pages out. And if they're quiet and they're ripping pages out of a binder, I mean, they're not throwing things. They're not screaming. They're sitting there nicely. And if that's what they need to do, why not? Like they're sitting there with you. Sure. I even use the color wonder ones that you can only use the markers on special paper because some restaurants don't like it when you get stuff on the tablecloth and then yeah. you get paranoid about that. Yeah. I always have that in my purse because it's like if they're not going to give you color, you can have this one. And it's like, and it's not going to, and I don't have to worry about it going anywhere but mm -hmm. only mark showing up on the paper. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's stress free for me because it's like I don't have to monitor his coloring yeah. everywhere around everything else. It's just, you can put it on the table, it's not showing up, but it's only going to come on the paper. And yeah. I like that one a lot. The, those it are helps me. Yeah. It's yeah, so yeah, fun. yeah. I've used those too. And Target has those all the time. Big ones and little ones. Um, mm -hmm. Also, I like those for car trips because then they're not going to color my door. <laughs> they're not going to get it all over themselves. Um, so those ones are really great too. Uh, even having um, little bags of maybe their favorite toy. So if they if you're like, oh, you can grab one toy and bring it and having things in the car. They have like little puzzles you can do, all sorts of tiny activities. Target the three to five dollar section has all sorts of fun stuff um, that you can, every time you go kind of gather a couple things and just keep them in your car or your purse. Um, the Dollar Tree too, if they like music or instruments, maybe once it's not super loud, but they can kind of shake or play with. Um, you can add in even games that with peekaboo games. So you, like playing little games that are sitting and they can kind of sit um, that work within the behavior that you want them to do uh, so to keep them kind of entertained. It's going to be a lot of work for you guys. <laughs> Going to a restaurant as your kids kind of learn to be at a restaurant um, will be an energetic activity probably <laughs> for some of you and might require a lot of getting up and sitting down and going to breaks <laughs> and kind of doing all of this but you're teaching them to move through it and to kind of get through it and what they can do. Again, try not to use the phone as much as possible. It's the easiest thing to do, but we want them to be a part of the, be a part of it. We want them to learn another way, another way to kind of be calm because then what we see that's different than their favorite toy, what we see with the phone is that they will then throw them, have the meltdown for the phone where it is not as common for them to have the meltdown for a coloring book or have the meltdown for a favorite toy. They might play with that toy if it was an option and the phone was not an option, but they might keep screaming until they get the phone because they're like, I keep doing it. They're going to they're gonna give it to me. And two-year-olds are smart and they know what they kind of know. They know how to get you. They know your buttons. They know you as well as you know them, and they pay attention to what gets them what they want. And I like um, for me, I'm always like, I'm, I love them. My children are smart, and they can figure that out. It's going to serve them well. However, <laughs> I need them to do what I need them to do now. So just knowing what kind of choice will keep them entertained, knowing you will probably have to stand up and take a break, and being okay with that, and kind of working through it. Sure. Sorry. Another thing that um. One of my therapists just suggested to carry with me headphones because he doesn't like very loud places. Mm -hmm. So to carry headphones and just to like not hear the noise, but also 
maybe to put some like relaxing music for them. Yeah. Which I tried the other day. I put some piano music for them. Mm-hmm. And surprisingly, um, I mean it worked. Yeah. The headphones are great. Um I now that um so to, to kind of share, I have an eight year old daughter with sensory processing. So I'm used to being like, oh, I need all the things to kind of get her to do that. And so headphones are great. And now it's at a point where she's eight. So I can say, we're about to go to a restaurant, grab your backpack, and I want you to grab squishies, and I want you to grab your headphones, and I want you to grab coloring. And she'll put it all in there, and I'm like, you don't have to use it, but if you need it, I need you to have the tools. So when she's little, I obviously couldn't tell her to do that. But now that she's older, she can, she, kn- she knows, this might be loud, I need to put on my headphones. And so even having that be your goal eventually, being like, if I continue to talk them through and provide all these things, eventually they might be able to recognize it themselves and be able to be at a restaurant in these loud spaces. And that's why continuing to get them out into the community is so important because they're, they will always have to go out there. You can't keep them at home forever. And eventually they will be older and they might continue to have these things be triggers for them but they will have to kind of work through that a little bit on their own. Um, and you want to give them the tools to do that. So that way they feel empowered and comfortable and can go to restaurants and have fun and not feel like so overwhelmed. And then you continue to be stressed and worried. I mean, we're always going to be worried about them, but um, it does help. And it's like constantly recognizing and being willing to change because the music might work now and then the music or different music. So all of a sudden the piano music's not working. You're like, oh my gosh. But then you put on different music and that suddenly works. So it's their tastes might constantly change and kind of being aware and monitoring that um, is really important and really helpful. Um, I think the second question was uh, eating at the dinner table. Sorry, the phone got locked. Um, So I can't, I don't know specifically what that question was, but um, eating at the dinner table. So uh, at home, even um, at the dinner, is that something? I'm gonna see if I can pull it up. Sorry, guys. If I can pull up the question a little bit. Let's see. Okay. Well, sorry, guys. <laughs> um, so I'll try to answer it the best I can. So getting them to eat. Um, for or maybe two to three minutes. Oh, I know what it was. It was for, while you guys were making dinner. The two to three the minutes. Yeah, I like hear the collective yes. Um, while you're making dinner, do you guys? Well, one can they participate? Do any of you guys kind of let your child do something? Maybe um, I don't know. Mix the salad. Oh, I, I let my son uh, wash his dishes. Yeah. Oh, he's just playing with water. Though. Yeah, I mix it. With- Cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great one. Also, pots and pans. Um, it's super loud for you, but um, letting them just play with pots and pans. Uh, one of the things I, I don't, I guess I don't remember doing it as a kid, but there's a million pictures of my mom put all the Tupperware into a cabinet that we could open, so that way we could pull the Tupperware out, we can climb in the cabinet, and we could put all the Tupperware back. We could bang around on the plastic Tupperware. It's not going to hurt anything if they <laughs> kind of knock it against anything, it doesn't break anything, and it's tough with plastic. Um, so that's a great thing, kind of letting them kind of be in the kitchen with you. That's really, they want to be with you. Mm-hmm. So letting them be in that space um, and giving them an activity they can play. You can even give them a spoon and a bowl and they can pretend to mix. Um, playing in the water is a really amazing one. Um, if there's anything that they can do to help you, even if for a second, like, hey, do you want to help me stir this? Ooh, do you want to help me kind of put these together? Um, ooh, do you want to watch? They can, if something's in the oven, you can turn the oven light on and be like, sit all the way back here. And you can watch the thing. Let's check on what we're cooking. Keeping it a part of the conversation um, and having kind of that be part of what, part of your dinner making. It'll be a little tricky at first if it's something you're not already doing, but kind of having talking to them in that conversation, be a part of it, um, is really helpful. Uh, also, uh, I was sent this really great meme that, um, okay, um, about how talking, oh, it couldn't get into it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, another great thing is 
talking about what you're doing all the time. That adds a thousand to two thousand words automatically. Um, so even just talking while you're cooking, they're listening to you. It's a great kind of language opportunity. Like, oh, mommies. I mean, that's I, that's why I think parents talk to themselves is because we're constantly kind of talking to these small people who don't talk back. Um, so just talking about what you're doing. Oh, I'm mixing the thing. I'm chopping the carrots. They can't help with everything, but they can be listening and watching and a part of it. And they're hearing your voice and allowing them to be in the kitchen in a safe space is really really helpful or even bringing in the crayons um, to the kitchen floor can they color on the floor on paper probably want to get the ones where they can only color on the thing if unless you are okay with little crayon marks on your floor um, is there a toy that they play with can they play with legos in the kitchen can they do something um, again try to avoid the phone and the tv just kind of bring them into your space as much as possible <laughs> this um this is a big one uh and big for going places because a lot of our children don't like to be buffered um into the car seat and that can be the source of the meltdown itself they don't want to be strapped in they they might still be turned around so they don't want they want to look at you they don't like the motion of the car. Some kids don't like the motion of the car. That could be a million reasons. Um, and that's really hard. So again, like I've said before, kind of see maybe what that could be. Is there music you can play? <laughs> Talking so they know you're still there. A lot, I, I've noticed a lot of times when they're turned around and they can't see you, they might be afraid that you're, you're not there. They're not, they can't see you, they can't talk to you. So constantly kind of singing or talking about where we are. Oh, do you see that out the window? Oh, look over there. Oh, let's sing this song together. Um, kind of talking about what you're doing. You can even talk about where you're going. <clears throat> oh, we're gonna go to the park. Do you wanna play on swings or the slide first? What, like, do we wanna climb up the structures? Do we, should we play chase? Kind of just, and they don't have to answer you. You can just, just talk it to them. Um, kind of see what, what calms them down, what brings them out of it. Um, if they have a comfort, so they have a bear or a blanket or a pillow they can bring into the car with them um they can kind of snuggle up with i think that that's great if you don't want to bring it out of the car because you don't want it to get lost um i think that that's fine too um and kind of working through that transition to um to with them of having to put it away uh, but if you develop that as a routine, like, okay, we're getting out of the car, let's leave our bear here so that he doesn't get lost and he'll be waiting for you and you can buckle him into the seat. Um, how about be a whole thing and they're like, oh, okay, and then bye bye bear, let's go play and we'll come tell him about all the stuff we did. And then it could be kind of part of it. If there's coloring with the, would be really great. Um, I, I always carry snacks. And snacks. Oh, yeah, I mean, just save good. snacks for the car. Mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah. I always have them in the car. Snacks the, the full butter the, in the car seat, put it down. She doesn't uh, have the, the saga in the mm -hmm. butter seat. Snacks are really great. Again. And like a special car snack. Mm -hmm. So one that maybe only, you only see in the car. Like, ooh, do you want your special car snack? Let's go get into We have to get buckled before you have your special car snack. And they're like, oh, okay. I won't get buckled for the special car snack. And I then know, goldfish. So goldfish. I know what you do for That's always a good one. Um, or even um, like a sippy cup with like water or anything that they can kind of drink and they can chew on too. That might be nice. That chewing action can be very calming, um, especially in the car. Or even maybe the headphones are working. You can pop the headphones in. Um, they don't need to be watching anything. They can just be listening. Or maybe it's the noise of the road is too much for them. So kind of using those tricks and also paying attention to what might be the trigger. But uh, the car seat and high chair meltdowns, it's that strapping in can be really tricky. Even the stroller, sometimes getting them, you don't want to not buckle them in because sometimes they wiggle and they pop themselves out. Um, and you kind of want them to stay in the stroller. Uh, but even getting buckled into the stroller and walking around places, after a while, they'll start to like do that arch thing that two-year-olds love to do. They you know, arch their back and they'll scream and they'll wiggle. But you can also have a special stroller snack. Our special going out 
place is spent. The goldfish you talk about, you can do a lot of talking, <laughs> like talk about everywhere you are. You can like kind of see if they like kind of the motion. They like to go to the stroller. You don't have to get silly. And when you're out in public, so people are going to see you be silly. But if it keeps your kid calm, you know, break down those walls a little bit and get yourself a little silly and be like, oop, we're going to flip up and do this and kind of what helps them to keep them entertained. And then maybe taking breaks. So if you can find breaks sitting in the store, they've been sitting in the car for a while and you're like, let's go walk around for a little bit. Do you want to push the stroller? They could put their bear in the stroller and they could push it a little bit. And then they get back in. Sometimes just bearing kind of how they're interacting with the stroller could be helpful too. Let's see. Oh, and this will probably be a good one for a lot of traveling by airplane. Um, that's always very stressful as a parent, especially in the holidays when you might be traveling. Uh, this one is tricky. So I know there's a lot of. Uh, what and oh and communicating to extended family that we cannot visit there so often communicating with family about visits and limiting them is hard and sometimes the families won't understand um also communicating to them during in the holidays like during the the party or at the house when holidays are overwhelming and they're loud and you know, a room full of people gets very hot and it might upset it might trigger a meltdown or some struggle with your child and not everybody's going to understand that it's not them misbehaving it's that it's just they don't know how to communicate being uncomfortable <coughs> and kind of what they need and that you're working towards it and so please i think you definitely should communicate that and don't get mad at the family that's a big one because then everyone gets defensive so it's so easy to be like well you don't understand and da, 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 and then it becomes a fight so it's okay for grandparents and aunts and uncles and siblings <coughs> who don't see your child to not understand why they are upset. Um, unfortunately, it's your job as the parent to then let them know and then remove yourself. If you're at a house, go to a room, say, is there a room we can go in for a little bit, um, have some special activities for them and just be like, you know, we're working on it. We're, we're kind of moving through it. It's okay. He's trying to communicate his needs. And he's going, we have him, if if you're comfortable kind of sharing some of the services that, with your family that you guys are going to, that this is how we're working on it, so that they know that it's part of what he's learning and part of what you guys are working towards, because they just don't know. They might not know all the information that you have because they don't come. Um, the plane ride, if you go on Pinterest, there's so many different strategies and posts and blog posts and lists and ideas on kits for airplanes. Um, I've never been one to do the one where you buy everything for the whole plane. Um, <laughs> I know some people will buy candy for all the other passengers and be like, or earplugs and be like, I'm really sorry, my baby's gonna be screaming. Um, but I definitely think some of those kits are really great ideas for you to use to keep your child entertained. Buckling them in, if they have trouble buckling during takeoff and landing, they have to be buckled. And anything you can do to work them through that, or they might just scream. And as long as they're buckled, get them up into the air and then pop it off. Um, I just, you, there will be moments where <coughs> they might be upset on the airplane. Um, and the other passengers, it's uncomfortable because you know that those other passengers are irritated and are like, oh, I'm on the plane with a child. But they're, a, the, going through your ears like your child can't communicate like an adult can your child can't suit themselves like an adult can <clears throat> and like this will be over in a minute we will work through it um and hopefully they all grumble in their own seats and they don't come up to you um so it would just be kind of using some strategies and some ideas to do your best to get your to have your child be entertained and to just anticipate as much as possible but then also know that it's okay if those things fail. And the plane ride will be over eventually. Um, and uh, hopefully no one has come up to you and said anything and kind of working through it as much as you can. Even if you're sitting next to someone like, I'm so sorry, we're working through this first time on an airplane. Um, if they say anything to you, then working through that, but 
there is a good possibility that your child might get uncomfortable on an airplane. We all get uncomfortable on an airplane. If you can get up and kind of walk up and down the aisle, um, that might be really great. You can, uh, the snacks are a great one. Airplane snacks are great. I would bring them in the comfiest clothes you can. I would bring all the comfort things that you can, that are okay for you to bring on the plane, get them as cozy as possible. Hopefully they fall asleep. Um, they do, they do have the movies on the screen. And although we don't like the, the phone and the iPad, if you're watching a movie, they get to wear the headphones. That's a little bit different, but try and keep them as interchanged with something else as possible. Um, the uh, crayons are good. Yeah, and that's another, like when we travel anywhere, a car or airplane, we always travel in nighttime mm -hmm. just because we feel like he's going to go to be happy. So mm -hmm. it, it makes it less harder for us. Yeah. And, and kind carrying of his warm milk. Day. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, recognizing those times of day for travel, even in the car. Like, is it hard? I don't want to drive at night, but is it easier to drive overnight? Because they'll sleep. Mm -hmm. Or are they just really are they great sleepers in the car so i don't have to worry about it or would it be easier for me you might have to make some adjustments as the like the grown-up which is hard um but if it gets you through a peaceful car ride or a peaceful plane ride um i mean i'd be a little bit tired <laughs> for that uh and kind of using those those strategies as much as possible to kind of consider so that's part of planning ahead making those plans knowing what would kind of be the path of least resistance for your child. And also knowing that no matter how much you plan, there will be moments, there'll be things you cannot predict. And even if it worked the last 10 times, that one time that you really needed to work, it might not, and that's okay. And you'll just have to kind of work through that moment a little bit. Um, I also have, um, Sure. So in addition to that, um, I'm be asking about bus and train. Mm -hmm. so we're talking about airplane, but someone else had a question about bus or train. Bus um, or train. And they've been using a coloring book. Yes. <laughs> the coloring book is such a, a magical tool because <laughs> they could just scribble. There's no rules to that game. There's no, you don't have to play with it this way. You don't need certain pieces. It doesn't need to be on the floor. They, like even said, you, they can scribble, you can scribble, they have all sorts of colors, they can crinkle the paper, um, all sorts of things. So coloring books are so amazing because they can be used in so many different ways. And kids kind of like to scribble because they don't have to, like it, Legos are also really great. I'm a big proponent of Legos, but you have to put the piece on there and they're easy to throw. And so when you travel, it's a little hard. Um, but with coloring books, they can do that anywhere and they can kind of color and they can draw what they see. You could talk about it with them. Um, that's the biggest piece that we kind of try to avoid the phone too. It's hard to just talk about what's happening on the phone. The coloring book, you can interact with them. Be like, oh, draw the sky or oh, there's a thing, let's draw that. Um, I've never had any experience on the train. Um, so I don't know a lot. I don't know if anyone here has any experience on a train with kiddos. Um, I I would only anticipate the same kind of struggles as being in a car. Um, they are also very confined. There's not a place to go. Um, they are very small, and so you can walk around on a train though. On a train, you can walk up and down the cars that you don't get in the in the car or even the airplane, sometimes you can't walk around on the airplane. So the great thing about a train is you can walk the whole trip. You can move between cars, um, look out the window at things passing. There's a little bit more freedom. Um, the bus is also really great and looking out the window is a really good, a really good thing. And the whole adventure of getting on the bus, you put the, your card or the money in the bus and you get to pick a seat. And then you get to look out the window and there's going to be stops and the bus makes fun noises um, and then also coloring <laughs> and little activities. Um, but there's lots of different things on a bus that's not in a car and you're sitting next to them on a bus. That's another thing. In a car, you're driving. In a plane, you're kind of confined. But on a bus, you get to sit next to them. There's, you're not buckled, so they get to move a little bit um, and you can kind of point out 
what's happening kind of around them. So using the environment is really helpful in getting them kind of distracted. Um, maybe <clears throat> singing a song. Songs are always really great. Um, that can work in the car too. Um, kind of distracting them with some fun activities. And the nice thing about buses and trains and airplanes versus a car is that you can do the song with them. So if there's a song in class they really like and there's a hand motion, they could do the hand motion. Um, you can do like some squeezes and some tickles if that's what they like. You can kind of be more interactive in those than in a car you're you're driving and they're sitting in the back, so it's a little harder. Um, and going along with that too, distraction tips. I guess we kind of talked about some, mm -hmm. but like um, showing them things and being really interactive on the bus, but that was another. I would um, pay attention to tips during field trips. During the field trips, your therapist will give you tips on how to point things out, and you will also see them walking through with your child and kind of showing them things and how they use it for language and how they kind of keep ever like your you guys all kind of together and a part of the field trip um pay attention to what they do and ask for advice from them because they're kind of they're the ones that are out there keeping them entertained during that time so that they don't the child doesn't get bored and then have a fit during the field trip um, and also doesn't wander off so your therapist is constantly doing exactly what you're going to do during travel during those times mm -hmm. out in the community with them so watch them see what they're doing and then ask them, maybe say, oh, we're going to go on a plane ride. Do you have any tips that I can use that, to kind of point out stuff on the plane? Maybe even ask them for like some, some words they can do. Is there any words that we're working on in class that I can kind of really incorporate into um, the plane ride? Is there any tips on how to work on that language um, with them um, and use the strategies in a more contained space? And they're going to be an amazing resource for that because that's what they're doing and they know your child's goals and they know kind of how they are in class so they'll be able to kind of tailor that to your child a little bit too um and then another question is um how to make a two or three year old understand or how to teach them to not be so loud and <laughs> so how do we address um, that if they're Ooh. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, I kiddos forget, and even when they get older than two and three, um, little boys, um, I'm fully experiencing six year old little boys go up an octave the second they turn six, and all of a sudden everything's happening real loud, and having to remind them to be to use their quiet voice, and you can start introducing that at two and three. Oh, we're inside. Let's use our inside voice. And then you have to then model that. Um, it can be really difficult when they're acting up and your voice might get a little bit louder. But even before entering, so you're about to go into the store. Okay, we're going to go into the store. And one, you're being silly. So they're going to go, oh, mom's going to say, I can whisper too. And maybe having a motion that you do that kind of cues them into, oh, it's now quiet time. Be like, Oop. Schools, if you have anybody has any school age children or nieces and nephews, maybe ask them what their quiet signal is. Um, I know my kids is a quiet wolf, or it might be my mom's a teacher too, so this might be hers. But there's lots they have sometimes they have three fingers, sometimes they're like, oop, we're the quiet, quiet wolf, and every and they just will raise it. Um, they do a circle the quiet circle and you can start incorporating that into your routine to kind of signal for them Ooh, like Ooh, quiet time we're gonna be quiet and they kind of naturally kind of fall into this oh there's a there's a signal and they'll kind of fall into it eventually um maybe be like we're gonna turn down our voices you can kind of give them a visual um just constantly adding that in there and then you're going to have to then do it too so it's just the prompting and again your therapist will be really good at kind of prompting into that and maybe if it's something that's super concerning for you guys talk to your therapist and maybe it can be incorporated into the class like oh let's all work on turning our voices down and speaking in a quiet voice um we tend in the groups to like them to kind of get play and we don't we don't really mind if they're getting loud but we could be like in a song even like we're going to incorporate in the songs when we work on 
quiet voices, voices versus our loud voices and kind of introducing that difference and idea to them in fun ways and making it really fun. Um, and then they'll kind of learn ooh, when we're inside, we use this voice. And we're outside, we use a big voice. And making it, using language. A lot of the times we talk a little high um, because we're grownups and we know where we want them to be. We know how we understand things. And sometimes that's where the miscommunication comes in is that we're asking lots of questions and we're using lots of lots of words when we really need to maybe simplify it and say it's turning it down which they might understand especially if you're watching tv um because you turn down the tv so we're going to we're going to turn down our voices and kind of using the things that they know and understand as prompts and cues um and then another one is how to avoid cell phones for a long period of time outside of home that one's tricky. No it's a really good question. Um, I think it takes a lot of work. Um, it will take you guys being really involved, knowing your child's triggers, be able to still see them and be able to get in front of them. Um, a lot of times we want to take them outside into the park because we need to kind of sit back. But if your child is a child that's triggered by various things in the environment or who easily gets kind of bored of one thing sitting in a car seat and will want an activity and needs to be entertained, um, which for a lot of our kids is true, especially between two and three, they kind of need to constantly have something put in front of them. They don't naturally entertain themselves all the time for long periods of time. It's so easy to hand them that iPad. But if what they're so what they're getting from that is visual stimulation and they're being given all this language and music and song um so you can just give them that so incorporating songs constantly talking to them um maybe not walking down the street maybe skipping down the street make so adding in as much of that stimulation to replace what the phone is doing the the biggest way to avoid the phone is just to avoid the phone and it's it seems like there should be some magical like ooh, do this this and this and they won't want the phone but they're going to want the phone um but just don't have it be an option just put it in your bag and be like nope you just have to be strong it's mommy's phone. you just have to be strong unfortunately there's no there's no other magical thing also maybe they might think the phone is theirs so no, this is mom's phone. This is mommy's, not not for you. We're gonna go over here and do something for you. Um, especially at this age, they tend to think everything is theirs. Um, so they naturally are like, oh, that's mine, because I like it. And just be like, no, this is mommy's, it's gonna go in the bag. It's for phone calls, it's for talking to people, it's not for TV. And then you just don't have it be an option and you find another way and you get creative. And if it's not even something that you even consider, I think naturally stuff, other options will start to come up because it won't be something you're like, ooh, but if this falls, I'll just hand them the phone. It's like, no, it's, there's some other way we can do it. You might, it's going to make you real tired at night, probably at first, especially if you're really active little ones. Um, but there's lots, I mean, we were all raised without phones. <laughs> we stayed entertained. There was a time where that was never an option and we still had to go places and our parents still had to take us places and all of these um kind of challenges and struggles are still real um so it is possible uh it's just something we're used to kind of having in our back pocket and we might use if it's just us and we're sitting in a waiting room we pull out our phone yeah that's <laughs> another thing like a therapist only it might have a lot to do with them seeing us on the phone all the time mm -hmm. so they want to honestly do the same as us. Mm -hmm. that's very true that's very very true because we naturally are like, oh, I'll just talk on my phone. I'll look at all the things on the phone. And they're going to want to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, how do you feel? Because obviously, I'm trying to avoid it. But if, like, my son really likes to watch videos of himself, mm -hmm. and, like all the videos he takes. Mm -hmm. So that keeps him kind of like, he'll, he'll watch those for a while. But is that the same? Is it not good? Because he's stimulated. I, I don't I know, think it's new. Kind of right, right. And I think it's more about having that be what solves the behavior. So in this situation, it's not necessarily like those are really great. And if maybe if you're at home watching those with him, 
and kind of be like, oh, this is you, this is really great. Um, but if he, at the, the point, especially for this, with handing over the phone, is having Stop. that be what's stopping the behavior. So even if he's watching videos of himself, but he's like, I scream long enough, mm -hmm. mom will hand me this video. Mm -hmm. That's really what we're trying to work through is that you bring them out into the community so they can enjoy the community. And because you're going to have to go out and be away from the home and do things, and they will not always have access to the phone. Mm -hmm. So you want them to be engaged mm -hmm. in looking around and entertaining themselves in another way. So in those situations, trying to just have the phone not be an option um, is because of that behavior. And then at home, you're like, oh, let's watch videos. And it's a completely different. It's not giving them the phone not when they've thrown a fit over it, but just like they're really calm and playing. You just want to interact with them. Maybe you sit on the couch. You're like, oh, let's go sit on the couch and we can watch some videos of your brother and you playing. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not a solution to a behavior is really the key point. Um, the big thing for a lot of this, um, and you can even start talking to about, which I talked to, like I said, my daughter has a lot of sensory processing too, and stuff is very stressful in school. And the biggest thing that I try to give her, and I think that we all need to try and give them, is that those stresses don't go away. Like, we cannot solve. We cannot make that noise disappear. We cannot make those big kids not play on the playground. We cannot make it not hot in this building when there's a bunch of place, people. We cannot make the restaurant um, framed any different. Like there are rules and you have to sit and this is how it goes. We cannot make all those hard things go away. We can only help our child learn to deal with those hard things and work through them and help them be entertained. So that is what we're giving them in these moments. And it's hard and it takes a lot of work, but think long term. Think about like if you do all this work now with them, eventually they're gonna be able to go and experience these on their own and you will not, one, there will be moments where you're not there, but you are giving them the gift of being able to move through this and be in these situations when they're older and you're not able to be there with them and they're with their friends and they're with other adults and they're kind of out. So someday these stresses will always be there. They're not just now, they're not just when they're little, they're there all the time. And there's a good chance that a lot of, um, I mean, there's things that as like we all have, they're like, ooh, this, I don't like going to this place because it's too loud and I just, I get stressed out, but we deal with it. And then we all have those. And so there's a good chance that our children will all continue to have those. Um, the degree to which those continue past right now is different for everybody but they don't go away. And so we're giving them this, these tools and this gift to experience the community in a way that's positive and to work through the parts that are hard and help them um, and like keep them from having that like fun positive thing in all these play areas because they're, going, they're, they're always gonna have to go. And we don't want them to be grownups that only stay at home. Um, so sometimes we forget when we're in the thick of it that we're training these little people to be adults. And we, how do we want them to interact with these when they're grown up? Do we want them to like run away and stay at home or do we want them to be able to go? So sometimes in those like really hard moments we're like, oh, I just want to hand them the phone and have, or we'll just stay home. We'll just stay home, it's too hard. But when they're 20, do you want them just to stay home? Or do you want them to be able to be like, I want to go out and have fun. I want to go to the grocery store and buy my groceries. I want to go do this. Be like, okay, well, they need to see this as part of the routine. And it's extra work for me, but it'll pay off if we keep struggling for it. What about um, timeout? I think that that's just. Oh, timeouts. Oh, yeah. so um, timeouts outside of the home. Timeouts. Um, I. I think it depends on the version of timeout. Timeout is different for everybody. Um, my personal opinion on timeout is it doesn't have to be go in the corner. Um, it's a break. Mm -hmm. It's like you are now, um, you have to remove yourself from the situation. Mm -hmm. We're not handling this well, and we will now remove ourselves before we move further. Um, the way you do it, if you use the corner and like a timeout chair or a stair or a spot on the floor at home, you're not going to be able to do that in the in like a floor. 
But what you can do is you can use the term timeout if that's what you use, and then you can just go to the side. So I would try not to say when we get home, you're going to have a timeout because one, you might forget. And um, two, it's not an immediate, it's not an immediate feedback. It's just like, it's just an empty threat mm -hmm. and they're going to know that. Um, I would also try, try to avoid when we get out of the store, we're going to have a, like, you're going to be in trouble. So try to avoid later threats. One, it's too, that's too high concept for them right now. And two, there's a good chance you're going to forget and they're going to be like, well, mom said that, but she never falls through with it. And they're smart and they know and they will pick up on that real fast. Um, so maybe if they're, if they throw something, it's like you're choosing to throw something like we're going to, it's time to go take a time out and you're removing them <clears throat> and you're going to set them probably outside is a great place. So they're not screaming in a safe way, um, to be like outside and we're going to sit here and there's no stimulation, just like the time out. There's you're like, we're just going to sit right here for one minute and you can sit in front of them and you just do the same thing you would with time out. You kind of bring them back. You're like, oop, we gotta sit here for one minute. That's not what we do. And you can use, if that's what you're using, you can use that same idea. It'll just be structured a little bit differently. Um, but if, if that's the feedback you're giving them, I definitely think it should be carried over. Uh, however, it has to be in the moment. That's the big key. So if you're choosing to do timeouts and you're choosing to do them in out in public, they need to happen in public. Because if you threaten the timeout later, it's not going to hold and stick, and it's not going to mean as much. Um, if you threaten to take something away, uh, for a lot of the children at two and three, maybe when they're older, that will be different because then you can remember and they'll be cool. Like, but when they're young and little and they're kind of working through it, if you're like, I'm going to take that away, take it away. So make sure that the threat that you give and the punishment that you decide to say to them. Sometimes as parents, we get caught up and we say something, we're like, oh, no, now I actually have to do that. Um, so make sure that your go-to um, takeaways and timeouts are ones that you actually want to carry through um, and then do them in the moment. So if they have a toy and if they're like, if you continue screaming, I'm going to take the toy away and you can't have it anymore. And they keep screaming and then you take the toy away and you put it in your bag. And they have to calm down before you get it back. And the second they're calm, you can give them back the toy. Because you're also training them to listen to that that punishment. Mm -hmm. They're also learning that you mean what you say, and then will also come back when they're calm. So it's kind of working through it, and it's going to look a little bit different. But the big key is immediate feedback, even in public, even if it's slightly embarrassing for everybody else around. If that's the feedback you want to give, it needs to happen then. So it's a big thing. So I say yes as long as it's right then. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or anything? Sure. Before I forget, uh, the good, good cop, bad cop a strategy, a good tool, or probably not? Like between parents? Yes. <laughs> I like to play the good cop. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, that's, that's so for instance, like uh, so my four year old, she doesn't like to eat vegetables. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to eat, eat my dinner. Same thing with, you know, I'm not going to eat my dinner. Same thing with, you know, I'm I eat my dinner or whatever. Okay, you're not gonna get your dessert. That's what you know. Mm -hmm. Mom would tell. And then like, oh, and then I'll try to like, oh, okay. I'll let I'll let you have your ice cream just this one time. But next time, yeah. You gotta eat your dinner. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Sometimes it works. But the next time, we're like the next night, or dinner, we eat your vegetables. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they work. Mm -hmm. Where, is that like kind of like a, a best solution, an easy solution to everything? It's definitely easy, especially if you get to be the good cop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so the good cop, bad cop. So one parent being the good cop, one parent being the bad cop. Is that useful? I think it's very easy and it's very natural. There will always be one parent that is the bad cop and one parent more naturally the good cop. It might also be situational. In some situations, it's like something that triggers one parent, so they're the bad cop, and triggers the other parent. I would say you can do that as long into a point. So you could be the calmer parent that's like, oh, I'm so sorry, I know it's hard, but no ice cream. Um, but you have to be on the same page because they will work, both of you. Um, for me, 
so I I brought in so how to phrase this because this is like setting up good cup bad cup while children are already grown up. I live with my boyfriend, but he is an active participant as a parent. And setting that up, it had to be like we're on the same page. And he didn't have kids; they're my kids. Mm -hmm. And so he's coming into a five and a seven year old like, well, I have to learn how to be a parent now. Naturally, was wanted to be the good cup, but it had to be like. And I was like, I don't want to always be the bad cop. That kind of stinks for me. So it's kind of setting that up because a lot of times they fall into it on accident because they're babies and they kind of they as they kind of grow and they we start disciplining them. It just accidentally parents fall into that. But it was very interesting to kind of be like, oh, I have to actually actively set this up, which is you've already fallen into that pattern. You're going to be doing the same thing, but we have to change this situation. And so you can. Be naturally the calmer versus stricter parent, um, but I think for those things you have to be on the same page and have it be consistent. So mom can be like, "Nope, you are going to eat your vegetables," and she can be the one that says it. And then you can be like, "Mom said, mom, mom laid down the law tonight. She said no vegetables. She said if you don't eat your vegetables, you don't get ice cream. This was the rule. Mom said it." <laughs> and be like, "I'm I'm so sorry, but mom said it. So you're still the good cop." Because you're still like, well, mom said it, um, or the opposite way. There have been times in my house where I'm like, I hear a discipline action, and I'm like, I don't know if I would have done that, but it's not wrong. And they'll be like, mom, and I'm like, nope, sorry, sorry, he said no. So, not my rule. He gave it. Like, you could still kind of back off and be like, I'm the good cop, but also like, I can't, I can't break the rule. We're a team. We don't we don't go against each other. You have to be a team. They have to know that they can't just go to one parent. And also in that too, you can kind of help encourage them. Mm -hmm. Maybe since you're the you know, maybe a little if you say like maybe let's just eat one vegetable. Can you give can you eat one carrot? Mm -hmm. And then we can have the ice cream. That's a really do good one point. or two. So even though they're coming to you like, oh I, mom said no, if you can still encourage, hey, can you eat one broccoli for me? And then I'll give you the ice cream. So they're still eating the vegetable. Right. And you're still being the good cop, kind of, and you're mm -hmm. still going with mom, what mom's saying, mm -hmm. but you're kind of getting them to do it too. So seeing if that works. And that mm -hmm. has worked. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, we all have this little cozy cone, mini ice cream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all three of them get one. But the oldest will get two. And next thing you know, the, the oldest has four. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and three, and, and my wife is looking at me like, what are you doing? That's a really, and that's actually really helpful to be supportive. So they might have gotten the rule, and they're more concerned with the fact that they're not getting the reward. And so then you get to be the person that gets to be like, well, what did mom say you needed to do? Like, what did you need to do? Oh, she said I have to eat my vegetables. Okay, how many vegetables? Oh, I only have to take one bite. Then let's take a bite. And let's just do it. And then that's actually supporting her too. So they're hearing the rule, but they're gonna shut down. They're like, oh mom said I can't have ice cream. And they're not really absorbing the fact that they get to do a thing to earn the ice cream. Um, and if you're like, it's cool, let's just eat the vegetables. Let's just go do it. We'll eat the vegetables and you'll get the ice cream. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, okay. Well, dad's still a good cop. Because he's the fun one that's like getting me to do the thing, but they're more concentrating on the fact that like, oh, that's not that big of a deal. So you're actually balancing each other really well, which is what the good cop, bad cop's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It's not supposed to be one against the other. It's supposed to be a balance. So it's kind of rethinking how you go about it and using it as a balance. So one sets the rule and the the reward or lack thereof, and the other one gets to be the one that's like, oh, come in. Let's do this because a lot of times when they've gotten to that point, they're no longer listening to that parent. It's like we've already had this fight and we're now in a negative space. And it's like, but I will listen to the other parent because I haven't had the fight with that parent so that they can come in as a new fresh voice. And that's really what um and that's really how it's useful. And it can be used to do a lot of good and like work through a lot of that. Well, what about like like my son? Every like I'm the strict one always. Mm -hmm. And every everything I tell him or or time out or he starts crying. Mm -hmm. It's like a super fake cry, mm -hmm. but he goes like, 
daddy mommy real man <laughs> like and he started being and sometimes he lies mm -hmm. mommy hit me oh and i did not mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, like, what did tough. i do in that because he's starting to lie a lot and i think they need to know that's not okay i think that's really important is to be like and I, you can even talk about it being a lie like oh no we do not lie like that is not true and that could just like you get your like a stern face and you take a moment and go uh-uh no like that is that is not what's happening here and then you just rephrase i think rephrasing is really good like you threw the toy mommy said you cannot throw the toy you are now in timeout like I was here, you were there, just restating the situation for them. So they know, like if I go, mommy, dad, I'm like, daddy, mommy's really upset. And they're like, yes, I'm upset. Yes, I'm mad. You can even say that. Yes, because you threw the toy when I asked you not to. And it'd be like, okay, well, then that doesn't work to like do anything. And if he's like, mommy hit me, it'd be like, no, that is not an okay thing to say about mommy. You threw the toy and just bringing it back. Keep bringing it back. Um, it's a lot of repetition, but I think that that's really important is that you take them out of that headspace. No, that's not what we're doing here. You are the one that made the decision. Now you have to do this. And I think that that's a really important thing to kind of work through. Thank you. So thank you so you much. Guys.